Ciao friends! In this video I'm going to explore the new features and the changes uh, introduced by the new version of DAX Optimizer, the version 1.2. This version changes the way the issues are evaluated, so I wanted to record a video to make sure you understand the difference and how to work with the new system, which is actually better than the previous one. Uh, it's an improvement over the way we, did, we, we were displaying the issues before. And uh, we also introduced the other two new features, like the uh, command line tool to automate the analysis of the issues and the detection of a new type of issues that are not related to performances, but to uh, best practices in writing DAX code to avoid possible mistakes, possible errors in the calculation. Let's start with the demo. So the first uh, feature I want to describe is the new way we evaluate the issues found in uh, uh, the DAX code of your model. DAX Optimizer analyzes the model, analyzes all the measures and provides a list of potential issues, performance issues that should be solved. And the prioritization of these issues is based on the analysis of the cost of the measure. Actually, it was uh, based just on the cost of the measure. But now we improved it, looking at the differences between uh, different issues within the same measure. So I'm going to introduce now how it worked before in the version 1. And then I will show you the version 1.2. So this is the version 1 of uh, DAX Optimizer. We're looking at the example uh, that we have in the sample walkthrough. And this is the list of the issues found in this model. Now, as you see, the um, uh, the important, the more important column is this relevance, which is actually the same importance of the corresponding measure. You see that there are two issues here, two different issues related to the same measure, sales amount. Now, if we look at the measures, the list of the measures, and we sort by relevance, this list of the measures, you see that sales amount is the first measure with the highest value. So basically in version one, the relevance of the measure was displayed for every issue of the same measure. Now, we know that actually when we enter the measure, every issue has a, difference has a different importance. You see that the impact of each issue is different, 74%, 26% in this case. So in the new version, we try to move this information also in the issues page so that when you have multiple issues in the same measure, you can figure out immediately which ones are the more important ones. And so we, you can evaluate different issues in different measures at the same time. So let's take a look at how the very same model now shows the data in the version 1.2. Before doing that, please keep in mind that what I've shown in uh, issues here is the expert view. If you have the standard view, you just have the relevance, which is indeed the more important metric to uh, establish which, uh, what is the right priority. Now, let's take a look at the same model with uh, the new version. With the new version, let's go back to the list of the issues. With the new version here, you see the new version at the bottom. What we have is that we have the same issues. These are the same issues that we have seen before and they are related to the same measure, but this time the impact of each issue is different. We can always uh, enable the expert view, and in this case we can also see the CPU impact and the RAM impact of each issue, which once again is an analysis of what could be the impact of just that issue on that measure. On that measure, but always considering how much the measure is important for the entire model which means that if the, if the measure is used by many other measures, its relevance is uh, higher. And so this will impact also the impact metric that we see here, while in other cases, uh, the, uh, the measure could be just a measure that is not used by other measures. And so its importance is uh, lower when you look at the model. Of course, if you know that that measure specifically is used in a report, it could be important for your report. But when we analyze the model, we analyze all the measures together. So this is an important difference because uh, we also use this uh, metric, the impact, this is a new metric that we introduced, also in the measures page. In the measures page, now we have two metrics, the relevance and the issues impact. 
Now, the issues impact is shown only in the expert view. If we go back to the uh, regular view, we only have the relevance, which is, uh, I, I think, simpler because the relevance belongs to the measure, the impact belongs to the issues. But in the expert view, we might want to take a look at what is the cumulative effect of all the issues of the measure. Well, this is the sum, the issues impact is the sum of all the issues within the measure. Now, pay attention because this number could be bigger than the relevance because, uh, um, let's say, part of the code could be involved by the same, by, by different issues. And in that case, uh, intentionally, that same uh, piece of code is evaluated multiple times. Because only if you solve all the issues, you will be able to uh, recover part of the calculation cost of that segment of code. So that's uh, the difference that we introduced in this uh, uh, new version. My suggestion is always to start either with the measure, with a, with a simple view, with a measure if you want to optimize all the issues in a measure, but if you have many measures and you want to focus just on the more important issues, now you have the ability to go in the issues list and just immediately focus on uh, the more important issues without having to open each single measure just to figure out what is the position of the more important issue. Now, the second feature that I want to introduce is that we extend the cases that we can analyze, that we can, we can find, the issues that we can find in a model, looking at the DAX code. And we extend that, I mean, we already, um, we're already adding, you know, every two, three weeks, uh, every month, we, we add the new cases. But now we started to introduce cases that are not specifically related to the performances. Uh, we started to introduce cases that suggest you to, uh, let's say, improve the code to avoid possible mistakes, possible calculation errors. Let's take a look at an, an, at an example in uh, this model. So you see that in the previous version, the model that we used as a simple walkthrough only found nine issues in the model, nine issues type. Then uh, there are several cases, so the total is 20. If we go in overview, sorry, is 12, sorry, is the, the total was 12. And uh, we have uh, uh, nine different issues, uh, nine different measure, combination of measures and issues. And you see that there are two cases in these three measures here. Now, the very same model, analyzed with the new version 1.2, shows a longer list. You see that we have 14 combinations, and if we go in the overview, we have a total of uh, 20 open issues. Now, the new issues that we found are actually issues like this one. I, I show you a quick example. Uh, a context submission is executed within an iterator without a unique key. We, th there are other cases similar to this. So cases where you write a code, the code works, but actually it's uh, dangerous. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, if the table that we iterate, the table sales, uh, had uh, uh, rows that are duplicated, the total that you obtain could be different. And of course, the knowledge base contains links, examples that, that explain that. Now, where is the news? Well, this is not a performance issue. I mean, we have a performance issue in this measure, but that is another, uh, another issue. This issue in particular doesn't have an impact. You see that the impact is zero. Uh, there is no impact because of these issues. You could decide to ignore it, of course, because this is not something related to the performances, but we have seen that there is the need of, uh, uh, let's say, analyze the code, especially if you have developers who are relatively new to DAX, this is the kind of problem that you would like to detect immediately. And the ability to find uh, automatically these issues, of course, will help you and your team to uh, adopt best practices in coding, in uh, the way you create the model, so that your DAX code is also safer and will produce correct results more often. Now, um, there are several uh, other uh, issue types that we added, and we are constantly adding these, these, these uh, new um, issue types. Uh, I just wanted to introduce the idea that now we have issues that are not performance issues, just the best practices to improve your DAX code. The last uh, feature that we added, I mean, we added a lot of uh, other small details, small features, uh, UI improvements, and so on, but the big feature that we added are these two, plus a third one, which is the ability to automate the execution of the analysis. Uh, let me try, let's, let's see if I find the mouse here. Here we go. Uh, what does it mean? So you know that we uh, have different levels of, um, 
licensing for DAX Optimizer. And uh, the highest level is the enterprise uh, license. The enterprise license is designed for those companies that have a team working on a, on a model. And when you have a team, you usually, or you might decide to implement uh, DevOps best practices uh, for deploying the model. So you have a, a, control, a source control system where the uh, definition of the model is consolidated and then is deployed in production starting from there. Now, when you implement such a system, uh, DevOps for data or DataOps if you prefer, you might want to add additional tests for uh, your model. And for example, DAX Optimizer can be part of the pipeline that you use to publish your model. Now, in order to enable this behavior, in order to integrate DAX Optimizer in your deployment pipeline, we needed to add the ability to completely automate the process of running DAX Optimizer, getting the result, and stop, if you want, stop the deployment in case there are issues. So how does it work? If you have the Enterprise Edition, you will be able to go to the group account. In this case, I have a group account that has a, a model, like in this case, Contoso, that is built by all the people that um, belong to the same team. And here we have this feature, Common Line. Common Line is just a tutorial, in this case, a dialog box that provides you the Common Line tool, the, the um, syntax of the Common Line tool that you should use to process this uh, particular model. So the command line tool has to be authenticated, of course, uh, and in order to do that, you need a personal access token that can be created within the user interface of uh, DAX Optimizer. Of course, you also need to uh, automate the extraction of the VPAX file, and this is possible with the open source, free open source VPAX command line that has been released uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and is available, and uh, you will find in the documentation the links to uh, download that other common line tool and how to integrate in the same uh, pipeline all these tools together. So I hope that this uh, uh, is a, these are features that you find interesting for DAX Optimizer. Keep uh, sending us feedback about this uh, tool uh, that uh, we help. We hope that uh, we help you to write better DAX code. Enjoy DAX! <laughs>